Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to build a bag which can contain items. The model here was created by a member of the community here called Fruppy, who was watching a previous video of mine where I talked about the um, Patreon status that you get when you become a Patreon on Neos. And what I said in the video as a uh, sort of, you know, outtake, as I said that you would get a P bag instead of a P batch. In response to this, they made me a P bag. So here's my P bag. And we're going to uh, use this model to create a bag which can store items. This will use several techniques from previous videos, so if you're unsure on anything I'm saying or you want a refresher, there's some links in the video description to other videos about this. Huge thanks to Fruppy for making this item so quickly and putting it together to uh, complete the joke, if you like. Let's get started. I'm going to show you how the uh, existing pea bag which they sent me works. I've made some quick adjustments to it for the tutorial, but this is pretty much how they sent it to me. Let's get going. So up over here into Smooth POV, you'll see that here is my, my pea bag where I store my pea. Um, and there's a checkbox on the side here, and if I click the checkbox here, the bag opens. And if I look inside the uh, inside the check uh, inside the bag here, you'll see that there's some cheese, and I can grab and pull out the cheese, and then I can check this checkbox, and it will shut the bag again, and I can put it to one side. So my pea bag contains cheese. Let's go ahead and build this bag. If you're looking to build this bag and you want the assets that I'm using, or even to take a look at one that's pre-set up, you can go to my public folder. Inside my public folder there is a folder called Tutorials, inside that is a folder called Logics, and inside that is a folder called Bag. I'll turn on my private UI so you can see this. So we're inside Public, Tutorials, Logics, Bag. On the left here you'll see P-Bag Setup, that's the bag setup that I just showed you showed you and on the right here is pea bag base which is without any of the logics on it so we're going to use that one to finish setting up the bag let's spawn that and take a look so here's the uh the default pea bag without any uh um functionality let's take a look at it so you can see right now that it's open and there's nothing inside so first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and take a look at it in the inspector so i'm going to equip a developer tooltip here and i'm going to point my laser at the bag and hit secondary this will inspect the bag and then we can hit Open Inspector. In the Open Inspector part of this, you'll see that we've got um, a visual slot open. Let me just turn Private UI back off, so we don't need that anymore. You'll see that we've got a visual portion of this. If we go up one level, you'll see that we're at the, the P bag base. This is the root of the item. This is where the grabbable is. So there we go. Let's take a closer look at the visual again. On the visual here, you'll see that there is one blend shape here, and the blend shape is called closed. When I drag this to one, you'll see that the bag is shut, and when I drag it to zero, you'll see that the bag is open. So the first thing we're going to do is set up a checkbox such that when the checkbox is checked, the bag is closed, and when the checkbox is unchecked, the bag is open. Let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to put this inspector to the left so that we've got it for reference, and I'm going to go ahead and create our checkbox. To do that with my developer tooltip equipped, I'm going to go to the context menu here and go to create new object Neos UI checkbox, and now we've got a big checkbox. As this is a quick tutorial for a quick item that was made as partially a joke, it's not that visual, but you might want to sort of put like a knot or one of those like uh, tie things that you put on, on ropes, etc., to keep them closed visually on this bag to make things look prettier, but for now we're just going to use a checkbox. With the checkbox in the world, we're going to go ahead and inspect it. So with the developer tooltip equipped, I'm going to point it at the checkbox and hit secondary here, which will select the checkbox. I'm going to open the context menu and go to open inspector. Once I'm in Open Inspector, um, so I've got an inspector open even, you'll see that there's this component here called Neos Checkbox. We use checkboxes in a lot of other tutorials, and like I said, there'll be links in the video description to other tutorials in this sort of area that might help you out if you're a little bit confused. But we're going to be using the is checked property of the checkbox. When I check the checkbox, you'll see that is checked becomes true. We're using this today because this allows us to pick this up within Logics a little bit easier. If you were using a purely component setup, you might use the dry fill property. Let's get started with the logics. So I'm going to swap here to my logics tooltip here. With my logics tooltip selected, I'm going to grab the uh, Neos checkbox to do this. I'm going to shine my laser at the word Neos checkbox here, which will change color. I'm going to grab. You'll see I get Neos checkbox in my hand. I'm going to push secondary in the world, and this will get me a interface card or an interface card for the checkbox. And you'll see here that we have the is checked property. If I put the tip of my laser into the is check property and pull out a ribbon and push secondary, you'll see that I get a value of true. And that's because the checkbox is checked. If I uncheck it, you'll see that we get a value of false. So we need to convert this value into a number between 0 and 1. Let's take a look at doing that. To do that, I'm going to need a node called 0, 1. You can find this within the node browser. To get to the node browser, I'm going to, with my logics tip equipped, I'm going to open up the uh, context menu and go to node browser. Once I'm inside node browser here, I'm going to go to the operators folder. 
And so inside the operators folder, I'm going to go to this 0, 01 node here, double trigger on that, so I now have 0, 01 on the top of my logics tooltip, and then I can double trigger in the world to get the 0, 01 node. I can now connect is checked to the uh, 0, 01 node. To this, I'm putting the tip of my logic tip into is checked, and then holding trigger and pulling out a ribbon and connecting it to 0, 01. 0, 01 takes in uh, a boolean, which is this gray sort of data type, and converts it to what's called a float, which is this uh, cyan or blue data type coming out the right hand side. Let's take a look at what this looks like. To do that, I'm going to put the tip of my logic tip into the blue output here, pull out a ribbon you by holding primary and then hit secondary, and you'll see that we've got 0 here. So now when I turn on the checkbox, you'll see it goes between 0 and 1, depending on when the checkbox is on or off. We now need to connect this to the shape key. Let's do that. So I'm going to move the checkbox aside here. We're going to come back to the uh, the visual part of our P-bag here, which has the blend shape weights here with closed currently at 0. To do this, we're going to need to um, switch the logic step mode just for a moment. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, I'm going to make sure my logic step is equipped, open up the hand menu and go to extract drive node. So it starts on extract interface. I'm going to click this once you'll see extract drive node. I'm going to grab the word closed here and you'll see that I get zero one, um, sorry, zero with ID, blah, 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 etc. Once this is in my hand, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to push secondary. This will spawn this sort of weird looking UI. There's a video about it in the video description called Driving uh, Shape Keys of Logics. It's one of the first ones I ever did. Um, and this is basically a node which allows us to drive that shape key. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and connect the output of 01 to this arrow. Whenever you see this arrow, it's what's called a drive. In this case, it's driving that blend shape or shape key to a particular value, in this case 0, but we're going to overwrite it by chucking in this um, this cyan line here. So I'm going to put the tip into the edge of 0, 01 and drop it into the arrow here, and then we're connected. Now when I check this checkbox, you'll see that the bag closes and opens, closes and opens. And if we look at this on the inspector, let's put this one to the side for the moment, you'll see here that the bag is currently open and closes at 0. If I check the checkbox, it goes to 1. This doesn't look that good though, because it just snaps open and closed. Let's make it snap uh, open and closed a little bit more naturally. To do that, we're going to make use of a node called Smooth Lerp. If Big Ten's watching, I hope you're happy we're using Smooth Lerp. So to get to Smooth Lerp, we need to reopen the Logics node um, browser menu and go to Math and then Smooth Lerp. I'm going to double trigger on that and spawn it in the world. Now Smooth Lerp is here. We're going to connect the output of 01 to the input on the top of Smooth Lerp. Smooth Lerp takes a number and smooths it over a period of time when it changes. You can think of it as um, smoothly rolling a ball down a hill rather than teleporting a ball down a hill or something like that. You'll see it in just a moment. So let's connect the output of 01 to the top of the Smooth Lerp operation, which is the target field of Smooth Lerp, and then we need a speed. To input a speed, I'm going to put the tip of my logics tip in, pull out a ribbon and hit secondary, and that gets us an input box. Here I'm just going to type in 2. I know 2 works out, that okay, so uh, we'll use 2. Now I'm going to connect the output of a smooth lerp into the arrow here again, just by dragging the ribbon into the arrow and letting go, and you'll see it overwrites the arrow that we had there previously. We can clean up a little bit, because we don't need some of the nodes that we've already got here, so let's go ahead and get rid of this one. We can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this. And there we go. Now let's check our checkbox. So you'll see the bag now smoothly unties and ties itself closed. That's it for the checkbox. Let's go ahead and make this checkbox look a bit neater by putting it on the side of the bag and making sure that it follows the bag. To do that, I'm going to first of all shrink it down a little bit. So I'm going to grab it with both hands and shrink it down. There we go. And I'm going to put it on the side of the bag here. And then I'm going to go to... Where did I put that inspector? Here it is. I'm going to go to the inspector for the checkbox, and I'm going to drag it onto the back. To do that, I'm going to put my laser at checkbox, grab, I'll have checkbox in my hand, I'm going to drop it on p-bag base, and you'll see it's parented. Then on the checkbox, I'm going to go ahead and just remove the grabbable. If you want to make something not grabbable, you can either turn off grabbable by turning off the enable property here, but as I never want this to be grabbable again, I can go ahead and remove the component there, and then I don't have to ever worry about it again. So there we go. Now the uh, checkbox is attached to the bag. So when I move the bag, the checkbox also moves. That's it for the bag opening and closing. Let's make it so we can now put stuff inside it. To do that, we're going to leave it open. So I'm going to check my, um, uncheck my checkbox to make sure it's open. What we're going to do is put a collider inside the bag. And this collider that's inside the bag is going to represent the sort of area inside the bag that we can contain items within. 
To do that, what I'm going to do is go up to the top where it says P bag and select visual. That's the visual model part of the bag rather than the top grabbable part. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, select P bag base. And actually, no, we'll put it on the visual. I was going to put it on the visual and then change my mind halfway through, but we'll put it on the visual. So I'm going to select visual here and I'm going to hit star. The star will create a second child object underneath the visual here called visual child. And you'll see that we've got an item here, which is sort of in the, the top half of the bag here. Let's go ahead and add that collider that I was mentioning. This is going to be the collision space where we can put stuff into the bag from. To make this collider, we're going to create a box collider. To do this, I'm going to go to the attach component menu. I'm going to go to attach component, physics, colliders, box collider. And you'll see that we get a nice big box collider. This is far too big though, it's larger than our actual bag is. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. Don't shrink down the size of the, of the slot here, instead shrink down the size of the box collider. I know from experience that roughly 0.2 in a few of the axes, axes works, makes sense. Let's do 0 0.2 in all of them and then just. That's more like it, but we'll make it a little bit bigger. But first of all, I want to move it so it's more on the sort of lower part of the bag. To do that, I'm going to go ahead with the developer tooltip equipped and the gizmos here. If they're not there, just go ahead and reselect visual child from the list here. I'm going to just go ahead and drop this down a little bit so it's in the middle of the bag here. And now I can expand it sideways just so it takes up that the other sort of edges or corners of the bags here. And that'll be on the x-axis. So we're going to just increase that from 2 to 2, 5. That's a bit too small still, so let's go for 2, 3. There we go, that's a little bit better. You could play around with this a little bit more if you wanted sort of perfection, but this will do for the tutorial. We have this collider in place, let's go ahead and name things. I always advise you name things in your inspector so you don't get confused later. Instead of this being called visual child, we're going to go ahead and call it collider. So I'm going to back off this off and call it collider. So we know that there's a collider on there. Now we're going to attach a component to this collider such that it can receive items. We're going to be using grabbable receiver surface here. You could use grabbable parenter, but grabbable parenter is a little bit more finicky, finicky for this video. I'll leave a um, video link in the video description for both grabbable receiver and grabbable parenter, so you can make your own mind up. We'll be using grabbable receiver surface though. To get a grabbable receiver surface on the bag, let's go to attach component. We're going to go to transform, interaction, and then grabbable receiver surface. With Grabble Receiver Surface um, enabled, we won't go over all of the settings of Grabble Receiver Surface. All we need to do is change the direction. So the direction is the direction in which we want objects to snap to the Grabble Receiver Surface. If you look at the gizmo that I've got selected on the collider right now, you'll see that the x-axis is coming out this way, the z-axis is going up, and the y-axis is going out to the side here. This isn't normal, and that's because of the orientation and transforms of the particular object. So to correct this, on the default settings of the Grabble receiver, we need to make it so that it's looking for items coming from above down. To do this, we just need to change this negative one that's in the Y column here and move it to the Z column. So let's go ahead and drag zero. Actually, we can do this the other way around. Let's grab negative one from Y and drop it into Z, and then grab zero from X and drop it into uh, y, and you'll see that we've now got 0, 0, negative 1. And what negative 1 means is that it's expecting items to come in from the top of the bag and go down. Let's now go ahead and change one more thing about the grabble receiver surface, which is the need to check this parent place box. With the parent place, bo uh, place box checked, it means items that are received by the grabble receiver surface will be parented, in this case to the collider, but you could also change that up by specifying the override parent slot. See the video in the video description called grabble receiver surface for more information about this. Let's now go ahead and grab our cheese from the start of the video and put it into our bag. So I'm going to take the cheese, put it into the bag like this. And you'll see here that the bounding box here of the collider slot changed. And if I go take a look at it in the inspector, you'll see that the collider now has a um, triangle to the left of it. If I expand that, you'll see the cheese is down inside it. So when I move this bag and look inside, you'll see my cheese is there. And indeed, if I close my bag, my cheese is still in there and I can go on my adventure with my pea bag containing cheese. We're going to do one more thing, and this is a sort of optimism um, clarity thing, which is we're going to make it so the contents of the bag are only visible when the bag is open. This does a couple of things. It makes it more optimal, as in that the contents of the bag are only there when the bag is open. That's a bit sort of optimization sense. And it's also sort of usability as well. What it means is you have to explicitly open the bag before you can take items out of it. Right now, I'll be able to grab into the bag and take the cheese out of it without opening the bag, and that doesn't make sense from a physics point of view. Let's go ahead and do that. 
To do that, what we're going to do is grab the collider on the left-hand side of the inspector here. Grab collider. And then push secondary over here. Actually, we need to change our logic tip back to extract interface. To do that, I'm going to open up the context menu, go to where it says extract drive node, and change it to extract interface. Grab collider. Push secondary over here. Make this, this is the right way up. And what we want to do is basically make it so that the contents of the bag is only available when the checkbox is not checked. To do this, we're going to use a node called not. This is also known as exclamation mark in logic. So let's go ahead and grab our node browser here. We're going to scroll to the top and head back to the root of the node browser because the not can be found inside operators. Let's go to operators and then you'll see it here right at the top, not or exclamation mark. Double trigger on that one, trigger once in the world, and you'll see that we've got the not node here. The not node will start life off with a green input and output, and that's a, a number. We can change that by just dropping in a boolean. So let's drop in is checked. So I'm dragging a ribbon into the input of not, and then you'll see it's changed into a not um, boolean node. Not will invert the output, um, invert its input, and uh, send that out as the output. So here, if I push secondary, you'll see it's false, but the checkbox is. Um, checked. This is exactly what we want. So when the checkbox is checked, the bag is closed, and we want the contents of the bag to not be visible. So let's go ahead and connect the output of not to active here. And then we can delete this. And let's now take a look inside our bag. And you'll see, look, there's no cheese inside there. Let me just get rid of these uh, gizmos for you to do that. I'm going to go equip the developer tooltip here and then go to deselect all. And now you can see quite clearly, hey, there's no cheese in there right now. But if I were to go ahead and open the bag by checking this checkbox and then taking a look inside you'll see that my cheese is back in there in the bag so that's the logic's done we've got a bag that you can store stuff in and you can open and close it and when it's closed those items don't exist temporarily for optimization and sort of usability sakes the last thing to do is pack away this logic let's go ahead and do that real quick to do that i'm going to go ahead and select p bag base hit start create a new child switch to my logic tip with my logic tip selected i'm going to grab the word p bag base child and then do set packing root here, which will set p bag uh, base child on on my tip here. And I'm going to go over to the um, logics here, and I'm going to go ahead and just hold secondary on any of the white areas of these nodes, so any of the middle of the nodes here. So hold secondary. The circle will complete by going around the uh, the outside of the tip, and we'll let go. Do it again here. Everything will disappear, and now our logics is packed. Let's go ahead and rename pbag base to logics so that we know that the logics is stored inside there. Logics, there we go. We can now close this inspector, put our tooltip on our tool shelf, and go up to the bag here. You'll see that there's my cheese inside. I can check the checkbox, and it closes, and the, bag, the cheese is gone. I could then say, leave this in a, in a cave for an adventurer to find or on this shelf in this world and then i can come up to the bag and be like oh i found some treasure let's open the bag oh look my cheese is inside there i can reach in grab the cheese out and there we go that's the pea bag you can find it in my public folder under like i said tutorials logics bag if you've got any questions about this, do remember to check the video description, which has a lot of videos that are previous to this series, such as the one on grab or receive a surface and driving blend shapes. Once again, thanks to Fruppy for this bag. I will treasure it forever. It's so great to have a joke, which is an outtake turn into an item that exists in the world. Um, thank you once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.